uh, obviously due to the winds which are gusting at 30 to 40 miles an hour, uh, it began to spread. Crews quickly tore out a 25-foot section of the boardwalk, leaving the fire with nowhere to go. Officials say the strategy apparently worked, although crews were still pouring water on the ruins well into the night. Residents are shocked and devastated. It's just, it's just not, not believable that this is going on right now, that Seaside Park is burning. I saw a big explosion, fire going up in the air. I was prepared to go to work tomorrow, or Saturday and Sunday I work, and now I don't have a job. The fire came just after the summer tourist season and followed furious efforts to rebuild after Superstorm Sandy. The Ocean County Prosecutor's Office says there's no immediate indication of whether the fire appeared to be suspicious or accidental. A detailed investigation is due to begin Friday. Sandy Kozell, the Associated Press. There also have been some challenges with water supply because of damage to the system post Sandy. And so in order to work around this, we are drawing lines from Barnegat Bay. So much of the water that you see fighting the fires right now is being drawn directly from the Barnegat Bay. Lines are being run from the bay all the way here uh, to the boardwalk. We are still trying to bring more fire equipment in here. This is going to be something that's going to be going on for quite some time. Uh, and we need to have easy access to this area of the boardwalk. Anyone who comes down to this area, whether it's by car or on foot, runs the risk of impeding our ability to be able to fight this fire most efficiently. So please, I'd say to anybody, I understand your concern, I understand your curiosity, but please do not come here uh, until you hear through the media that it's all clear to return to this area. When I got my first full briefing before I left, um, Trenton to come here, uh, I said to my staff, I feel like I want to throw up. And that's me. Uh, after all the effort um, and time and resources that we've put in to help the folks in Seaside Park and Seaside Heights rebuild, to see this going on, as I said at the top, it's just unthinkable. All right, back to the boardwalk right now, just off of it. The mayor of Seaside Heights, Bill Akers, joins us. Mr. Mayor, I mean, we talked a lot during Sandy and what happened down there. Then here you are now in front of burnt out buildings and, and devastation once again. I guess my question to you is this. When you woke up and walked around your town this morning, what did you see? I, I, I apologize. Uh, could you, could you ask me again, please? I, w I didn't hear real well. Uh, it's okay, Mayor. I understand. I'm it can be very tough. That. It can be very tough in these situations with the noise down there. When you woke up and walked around your town this morning, sir, what did you see? Sir, you, you know what? I was, I was, I was, uh, it was better than I, I was thinking it was going to be. Because as we stood out here to a very late hour last night, uh, your imagination was running a little bit. But when I looked at how they got it contained, and, and getting it contained at Lincoln Avenue was such a key. 
uh, setting up that fire break there, it saved a tremendous amount of property value there. So a as bad as it is, it could have been a whole lot worse. And, and I, you know, this is something we can handle. This is most, most definitely. How many, how many businesses did you, as far as you can tell, lose in Seaside Heights? And what about uh, just on the other side of the municipal border? What about your, your brethren over there in Seaside Park? I think the majority of the businesses uh, I, I, I are going to be in Seaside Park. You're in that little bit of a stretch there. Uh, they're going to have about 30 plus businesses. In Seaside Park, you're going to have less than 10 businesses that were affected by this. You, you touched upon this in the interview with you that we broadcast a little bit earlier in one of our reports that, I mean, you still have a lot of people, you have people down there who have still not been able to get back home after the hurricane. What kind of impact does this have on them? You know, it, it, that's an outstanding point, and I, I've been trying to make that point. You know, as we were we were really hoping to move back into the residential community, we we had gotten a boardwalk open, we got the businesses on their feet, um, and and we had a summer, regardless if it was uh, maybe not as strong as it should be. But normally we have 2,300 residents uh, living here year round. Uh, we're less than a thousand at this point. A lot of people, uh, the insurance money was late coming in, the FEMA money was late coming in, uh, SBA loans, whatever the case might have been. But now we're to the point of, of uh, lifting homes and getting these people back in, and we're right back to square one again, um, dealing with the boardwalk issues. All right, uh, Mayor Bill Akers, Seaside Heights. Uh, our hearts go out to the folks down there. We, we appreciate your being there for us, sir. We thank you very much. Uh, and we hope to speak to you again under better circumstances. Thank you, sir, and you take care. What is happening right now in Seaside Park, New Jersey, down the shore, a Thursday afternoon that seemed to be totally normal and totally uneventful suddenly burst into flames, literally. We're not quite sure how it happened, but we do know at this hour that things are burning out of control. Six alarms have been sounded, the fire apparently starting in an ice cream shop just off the boardwalk and spreading and spreading and spreading. At this hour, we're told the governor is en route 
He will be holding a conference of some sort, a briefing uh, at the uh, command post in a couple of uh, minutes, perhaps, uh, perhaps a little bit farther down the line there as well, with a variety of state officials that he's gathering with him and with local officials as well to try to describe exactly what's going on, to try to describe what assets can be employed right now to try to take control of this thing uh, as a fire that essentially came out of nowhere continues to burn as we speak. Our senior correspondent Desiree Taylor is standing by live for us right now. We dispatched her immediately to Seaside Park. Desiree's right at the intersection there, the firefighters around you. Uh, give me a sense of, of what you're seeing there, Des, of what's going on precisely. Mike, I don't know if you can see the scene behind me, but it is unbelievable. There is a thick black cloud of smoke billowing above. I'm going to step out of the way so you can get a good, clear picture of it. You can see firefighters working as we speak, uh, trying to uh, give as much water, anything they can, to try to control this fire. Uh, but it has been raging out of control for hours. Now, we drove here from uh, Belmar, and I can tell you that on the way down here, we started to see this. Uh, a long black cloud of dark smoke, um, really miles from here. Um, so it is just a scene that is, uh, you know, uh, certainly has people uh, concerned here. Now, let me give you a little update about what we know so far about this fire. Uh, authorities believe it started around 2.30 this afternoon at a popular ice cream uh, shop here called Coors, which is uh, right near the boardwalk. Now, it's still not clear exactly how this ignited. Uh, it's going to take some time for authorities to determine that, but uh, what we do know is that it has spread quickly, uh, engulfed a big section of the boardwalk, in fact. Um, now, there were early reports that firefighters were starting to get a handle on this blaze, maybe start to get it under control, but something apparently happened. We're not sure if it was an explosion or just the strong winds, which really are whipping up here, um, but it has moved north recently, and bit by bit, bit uh, it has been moving north on the boardwalk, block by block. Now, um, much of the area near the fire has been evacuated. Uh, we're just steps from the boardwalk, but um, they are starting to move people away, and um, you know, we'll give you reports as uh, an update as soon as we get more information, Mike. All right, Desiree, before you go, I've got a couple of questions for you. First of all, I see the firemen behind you. You know, obviously, there's a, a lot of equipment on the scene, and a lot of people are putting water onto this. Uh, what precisely, just, just observe what's going on around you. I, I, what are the guys behind you doing right now, uh, say, up to your right shoulder? What are they doing over there? Mike, there's no question, um, you know, this is certainly a blow to this community. Um, certainly this has community and up and down the shore. Um, they've been hit hard by Superstorm Sandy, uh, barely have recovered. Uh, if you remember uh, that iconic image of the Jetstar roller coaster um, in the ocean here, uh, one of the many things damaged, um, that was just removed this spring. And uh, crews here worked hard to try to get some semblance of normalcy here uh, to try to get this community ready for the busy summer tour season. Uh, some of it is back, but there's still a lot uh, of work that needs to be done here. And to have a fire like this to really uh, decimate a good part of uh, the boardwalk again is an economic blow. It's also an emotional blow uh, to people who have been through so much. So um, we will bring you updates as soon as we get more information. But at the moment, uh, firefighters from all over the county are working hard to try to control this blaze. And it looks like if it keeps raging on as it is, uh